Senator Ted Cruz. Ted, how are you? Thanks. I'm doing terrific. Great to be with you. Yeah, really wonderful to have you on, man. I watched a lot of this Zuckerberg testimony yesterday. If you don't mind, let's jump into that, okay? Sure, absolutely. I'm watching it, and I'm seeing his answers that are very, very scripted, and I'm hearing people like Cory Booker ask things about if you're going to hire more diverse people or something. I mean, I thought the whole idea was to sit this guy down and say, A, breach of privacy, what the heck happened? B, are you being fair with people on different political sides of the aisle? Well, why, yeah. were there, why were there so many senators, Ted, that were just dancing around those topics when you went right after it? Well, you know, I, I, I can't tell you the answer to that. You know, I can say any hearing where you got 43 senators – uh, almost by design, is it's not going to operate very right, well. It's, right. it's uh, you know, li li listening to 43 senators that, that that may well qualify as cruel and unusual punishment under the Eighth <laughs> Amendment to the Constitution. I, I guess it could be. Uh, when it get, when it got to be your turn. I love what you did with it because you went right at him and you said, let's talk about politics. Is there a, a left versus right persuasion on Facebook? Do you squelch and silence or censor some voices while you don't do it with other voices? And, of course, his answer was no. Did you think he would say no? Uh, yeah, sure, uh, be because they at least publicly claim they don't do it. But the problem is the facts are, are, are otherwise. I mean, we've seen over and over again instances of Facebook and Google and Twitter um, all uh, – effectively silencing conservative voices, whether uh, w w whether it consists of, you know, that back in May of 2016, Gizmodo reported that, that it was that Facebook purposely and routinely suppressed conservative stories from trending news, right. including stories about CPAC and Mitt Romney, yep. uh, the Lois Lerner IRS scandal that they'd go in. I mean, look, Zuckerberg testified they had 15 to 20,000 people doing, quote, security and content review. These are people that are assessing... All right, Joe Pag just posted something. Is yeah. this good content or bad content? And from everything we know, all or virtually all of those 15,000 people are on left of the center, and, and they have the power to silence any voices they don't like, and that's dangerous. It's Senator Ted Cruz, Republican in the great state of Texas. Uh, Ted, you went right after him on that. You asked him how many of these fifteen to 20,000 people that are the review board, basically, how many of them are, are lefties, or how many of them are Democrats? How many of them are liberals? How many of them are conservative or Republican? And his answer was he didn't know. Do you believe that? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if he knows or not. I, I can tell you that, that there are virtually no open Republicans or open conservatives in Silicon Valley. Uh, right. I mean, it, it is virtually non-existent. And, and I will give Zuckerberg credit for, for the candor in which he admitted he said Silicon Valley is extremely left-leaning. Right. I mean, that, that, that's right. They are. And listen, they're entitled to have their views. They're entitled to be socialists. They're entitled to believe whatever they want. But what's dangerous is more and more, over two-thirds of Americans get their political news from social media. And, you know, you think back to the height of, of yellow journalism when, when w William Randolph Hearst, the publisher of newspapers all over the country, uh, you know, it pushed his political views through the newspapers, sort of the original fake news. Right. Uh, you know, got, got America into the Spanish-American War. Well, well Facebook and, and the tech companies have power that William Randolph Hearst never dreamed of having because there you could at least tell that a publication was biased. What these social media platforms have the power to do is if – Pag, you, you post something on Facebook, you tweet something on Twitter, they can simply make it disappear. So right. nobody hears you and you're just shouting into the void. And simultaneously, if you just have a you know, regular text and is looking at a social media feed, they can just only show you the voices they want to promote. And it's silent and it's secret. And that is, I think, an incredible threat to our democratic discourse that we have these all-powerful censors. And, and we're simply told, well, trust me, uh, we're not going to use it to push our political viewpoint. Well, the, the, the evidence is to the contrary on that. It's a Republican from the great state of Texas, Ted Cruz. And, Ted, you're absolutely right. A friend of mine who is a conservative, who, who follows me, follows you, you're this person's senator, um, got out of the blue on the timeline the other day a big, long thing from Lloyd Duggett that said well, how crazy or how nuts or what a loser President Trump was. This was not a sponsored ad. This was a suggested page to this person whose yeah. political leanings are clear to Facebook. So they're doing it. They're not only doing it to me, which they, they've been shadow banning me for a long time. I've got 370,000 followers, and when I post that Ted Cruz is going to be on the show, 17 people see it. I mean, the reach is like 100. So, yeah. and, and Lloyd Dogga can post something, and 4 million people see it. So it's clearly happening. But is the problem, Ted, that we're, we as human beings want to believe that life is fair, so we believe that what we're seeing must be true because this huge entity, whether it be Google or Facebook or Twitter, are telling us that's the, that's the way it is. 
Well, you, you know, you take something like shadow banning. I yeah. mean, the reason we know about it is is because engineers from Twitter came forth and, and said it's a practice that Twitter engages in. That, that that what they do is if they have someone that they dislike, they don't tell them they're banned. So, yeah. so you send out a tweet, you assume your followers are seeing it, but your followers don't get it, and and, and it simply goes into the void. And and that that phrase shadow banning came from former Twitter employees. Who said that this this was a common practice there? Ted, Ted um, what's the what's the legality of it? Uh, is Mark Zuckerberg or Jack Dorsey, whether it be Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, whatever, are they forced through the the FTC and through bait and switch, you know, laws? Are they forced to allow everybody to freely share content, or because it's their privately started and owned website, uh, they can do anything they want? What's the legality here? Well, there, there are a lot of complicated questions there, but, but the opening question that I asked Zuckerberg was, was a very simple one. Does Facebook consider itself a neutral public forum? And, and you may recall he danced around that he did. didn't want to answer. He never answered me directly. Right. Now, now the reason it matters is, is there is a law Congress passed called the Communications Decency Act, and, and Section 230 of that law gives Facebook and Twitter and other tech companies a special immunity from liability. And, and, and what it says is if you or I post something on Facebook that you can't sue Facebook for what somebody says. And, okay. and the whole basis of that special immunity from liability is that they're neutral public forums. That it's not fair to sue them because some, some individual posts something on their site because they're simply a forum for the speech of others. Right. Well, if they don't want to be a neutral public forum, if they want to instead be a political speaker, they got a First Amendment right to do it. They can be hardcore left-wing socialist if they want, but if they're not a neutral public forum, th th then there's no reason for them to have a special congressional immunity from liability. I mean, Pax, you don't have that. If, if you say something on air in this show, if you slander someone, right. you can be sued for slander. Right. Uh, they have an immunity from that because they claim to be neutral public forums, and yet their behavior is anything but being neutral. So if we can, in other words, if, if we can prove that they're shadow banning, and again, we know from Twitter, Project Veritas uncovered that. We also know because I've seen the shadow ban happen to me and to Diamond and Silk, who, by the way, were just yeah. floored that you mentioned them yesterday. They were tickled pink. I, 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 was, I interviewed them after your testimony or after your, your questioning. They just loved it. And they love you, Ted. Uh, but but well, if, fantastic. if we are being squelched, and we are, I can prove it. If we are being censored, and we are, I can prove it. They'll lose that immunity if I'm hearing you right, and I can sue them if somebody calls me an axe murderer on their forum. I, I, I think that is, is exactly the consequence of that line of questioning, and, and it has potentially re real force. You know, there's a second potential remedy, which is by any measure, Facebook and Google are both larger than Standard Oil was when it was broken up under the antitrust laws. Amazing. It's larger than AT&T was when it was broken up under the antitrust laws. And, and I, so I do think there is a fair question about whether they are exercising monopoly power. Uh, and, and there's a reason we have the antitrust laws, which is to prevent monopolies from abusing their power and abusing consumers. And if they're behaving like Big Brother and censoring political speech, I, I think that raises very serious legal questions uh, that I expect to see a whole lot more scrutiny devoted to. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, Republican of the great state of Texas. Ted, any changes going to come out of this, or is this just a, a dog and pony show and Zuck is going to keep on censoring me and Jack is going to keep on censoring Diamond and Silk and, and you and others who have conservative leanings? Anything going to change? Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I think Silicon Valley for a long time has felt untouchable, has felt like their power is completely un, un, unchecked. Um, and, and I don't know if that will change or not. One of the things that, that, that I have a real concern about is a lot of the Democrats are all up in arms in this hearing and, and we're huffing and puffing. And, and my concern is that the tech companies will use the Democrats being upset as an excuse to censor even more, to silence views you know zuckerberg's testimony said well we need to make sure not only that you have followers and friends but they're good followers and friends yeah what is that and, all about and, uh, you know who it, decides it, that it, I, I mean that's exactly what i said i said you know who the hell are you to decide <laughs> if my if my friends are good or not right that, that's not your job um and then he pulled this but, out Teddy. he said yeah well we would agree terrorism is bad right i mean what a dumb a straw man argument that was he's actually saying diamond and silk ted cruz and joe pags are bad that's why we're censoring some of what they're posting and then makes a comparison to terrorism that we all you know uniformly disagree with well and ironically some of the speech that they censor 
are people calling out radical Islamic terrorism yep. because they don't want to actually call out uh, where much of the terrorism is coming from. I mean, it, it, it's it, it, there's a, a, a political correctness and a censorship that, that, that that's really it, it, it has a threat to our democracy. And I hope the result of these hearings is in Silicon Valley doubling down and right. saying, all right, now we're going to silence everybody who disagrees with the politically correct left wing view. Um, I, I know. I, I think. I know how busy you are, and I want to get one more quick one and maybe like a 30-second answer. Um, yeah. As as the hearings end and as he goes back to Silicon Valley, is, is he going to have a lot to think about, or do you think that he's just going to say, did I do well or did I do badly, and then it's going to be standard operating procedure? Billions of people, as you know, use social media every single yeah. day, and they're all going to be affected by this. Can we expect – because I don't think you want regulation. I don't want regulation, but we certainly don't want somebody to have the power of omnipresence to decide what our news is either. Well, what's the I, end look, game? Uh, that is a very difficult question. I, you and I both passionately believe in the First Amendment. Yeah. I think people should have free speech. And, and, and if techies want to be left-wingers, that's their right. But it's not their right to censor the free speech of others. And, 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 and so that – how exactly what legal tools we use, whether it's not giving them the immunity of liability, whether it's the antitrust laws or other legal tools, I think we have an obligation – to protect free speech, to protect the right of people to be left-wing or right-wing or wherever they want to be. Um, you know, I, I agree with John Stuart Mill, who says the cure for bad speech is more speech. Hey, Ted, thanks for, for taking the time today. Masterful yesterday. I wish you had more time with Zuckerberg. Let's talk again soon, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, my friend. Take care. Uh